Hello, I'm Gary Stearman, and welcome to This Week in Bible Prophecy. My guest is Tom Hughes, and Tom, welcome to This Week in Bible Prophecy. Hey, thank you, Gary. It's a delight to be here. We have so much to talk about. Uh, Tom has uh, written a book called Marking the Masses. And, you know, I've seen a lot of, of uh, books on Christian subjects in my life. And this one catches the spirit of the times, I think, in a way that uh, I haven't seen very much lately. And I, I, I want to go into, first of all, how did you come up with uh, the, the cover of the book? Because it really, it's really suited to what's inside. Well, working with the publisher, the publisher uh, had this great idea. I think it was a brilliant idea, just looking at the whole book, the content of everything, and how the whole concept of the book even came about. And uh, so just put in this question into an artificial intelligence uh, program and ask the question, show me what the new world order might look like. And this is completely AI generated. So it's not a compilation of what other people have put together nor anything like that. And what's fascinating is on the cover, uh, you'll see a big pyramid and you can see these heads, you see these different lights. I have a friend who uh, worked for the military and uh, one of the, you know, the secret stuff, he said he was down in Antarctica. And he goes, I was underneath things. There's buildings, there's all kinds of things in Antarctica that people don't know about. He said, that pyramid on the cover of your book, he goes, that looks so eerily like what I've seen that it, they have down there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and, That's what I said. I didn't know that until he told me. And then we, we could go farther, but then uh, somebody would come in and knock on our door and say, you can't talk about that. That's that's coming. We know that day's coming, don't we? Uh, we the do. knock is going to come on the door, and they're going to say, look, the things that you guys talk about, you aren't going to talk about this anymore. Well, to me, the cover looks like the Tower of Babel, it, it, the modern-day Tower of Babel. And, and, you know, if you will, uh, AI and... and uh, the whole scientific system that we have that's burgeoning right now, all of that reminds me of the Tower of Babel. We're going to get, build a tower that goes to the heavens, and, and we'll be able to converse with God on a face-to-face -face basis. You know, there's that kind of hubris. There's that kind of p pride in what's going on today. Oh, well, it's interesting that you mentioned that, because when we think AI developing the cover, um, just coming up with the drawing for the cover, and by the way, it wasn't AI that came up with the book. That was me. But it was well, I'm glad. It, and I'm not artificially intelligent. In fact, some people question my intelligence. But uh, when we look at it with this, if you think, okay, AI came up with this, well, what happened at the Tower of Babel? That was Nimrod, the original type of Antichrist, who says, hey, you guys, uh, let's build a tower to the heavens. And, you know, you go into the Tower of Babel, which I do also talk about in the book, but you go into it and you look at it, what were they attempting to do? So it's not a coincidence. I, AI would certainly know what the Tower of Babel was just from all the information that's out there and what the Tower of Babel represented. Uh, Nimrod is behind it. So guess what? You come up with this picture on the front. It doesn't look like the Tower of Babel that was painted, you know, a couple hundred years ago. This is a whole new, it's a whole new uh, picture that it came up with. Yeah, and the whole Tower of Babel concept is that we can uh, break through, uh, if you will, a kind of a barrier between heaven yep. and earth. And uh, I think that modern man has that same idea fermenting in his, in his mind these days. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so wh what's Nimrod promise? Listen, we don't, it's really, it was, uh, I'm God. We're building above, up to the heavens. This is who we are. This is who I am. And there's this promise of peace. There's this promise of security from Nimrod. I'm going to take care of you. All is going to be good if you stay here with me, right? So God split that up. So what do we have the promise when it comes, uh, coming from artificial intelligence now, uh, from the likes of people like Yuval Noah Harari and uh, the rest of the people in the Silicon Valley and these globalists worldwide. The promise is, same one in the Garden of Eden. Listen, if, if, if you listen to me, here's what God doesn't want you to know. You will be like God and yes. 
you will never die. So this is the promise that is coming through what we see, the direction of technology, um, all the, the whole uh, socioeconomic system that's developing, all the cultural things that are developing. Everything is going this way. And the promise, people are very selfish. They're narcissistic by nature from birth. And because of that, this feeds into people. Just like the serpent with Eve, you'll be like God. You won't surely die. What's the promise? You're going to be like God. You're not going to die if you get augmented with and, this. And what you're talking about is genetic uh, manipulation and through uh, artificial intelligence, through, through computer generation. And, and computer generation is developing at such a rapid rate, I, you can't measure it. I mean, every week it's a new thing. But AI, uh, they're saying now, can build super cells and super beings uh, just by modifying the human genome. And that does that not sound like uh, something that we've read in the book of Revelation? Oh, it absolutely does. I mean, when you start looking at the book of Revelation, you have so many different dynamics that are in there, um, whether it be the demonic things of Revelation chapter 9, uh, but you walk right on through the process. And what, what happens to people when they receive the mark of the beast? Something happens to them. Certainly there's the spiritual dynamic uh, because we know from Revelation chapter 14, when a person receives the mark of the beast, the angel says, hey, there is no going back. You, you, you've lost, there's no hope for salvation for you. Uh, your place is the lake of fire if you receive the mark of the beast So when you, and worship his image. So when you look at that, it's a spiritual dynamic. And as many people are pointing out now in the prophecy world, Bible prophecy world, look, with what's taking place with genetic engineering, Yes. With technology, it looks like there's a good chance. And I'd be one of those people that say, looks like there's a real good chance you will be augmented. Something is going to happen to you when you receive the mark of the beast. There's a spiritual dynamic, no doubt about that. I wouldn't argue against that with anybody, but it appears something else is also going on there. And what we're witnessing certainly gives us that insight. Well, if you modify a human being, you, you raise an immediate question is that human being? one of God's creatures, yeah. or is it one of the Antichrist's creatures? In other words, it, it, would that individual who receives <clears throat> a genetic boost, if you will, uh, be eligible to go to heaven? Or, or would that individual be rendered forever uh, <clears throat> out of God's realm, out of God's regime, just ruled out by what he has done? Well, a person's DNA wouldn't have to be changed much in order to mean they're no longer human. And when you start looking at it, you go, their genetic code. So you look at it, which, uh, by the way, since there's a code, it also implies there's a creator. How could you have a code without a creator? Exactly. Uh, for all those you know, people arguing there is no creator, well, guess what? It is, I believe, this attempt by the devil himself through his people that he works with on this planet to make these amendments. And, and make no mistake about it, when, you li when we listen to these these uh, technocrats talk. This is what they want to do. They want to change humanity. In fact, uh, going back to somebody like Yuval Noah Harari, where he says, you know, this is what they look at deplorables, which I deal with in the book to quite uh, an extensive amount also when it comes to. Well, you have a section in your book called Beastly Deceptions. And, and I think that's kind of where we are. We're talking about that. And, and, and it sends cold chills down your spine when you think about these things. Oh, uh, it totally does. It, you know, so the, the deceptions are the, they come with all the promises of, of all these wonderful things. But the, isn't this the way Satan appears as an angel of light going to appear good? Yeah. And, and I think, speaking of deception, Gary, also there's this concept that, that people think they're going to recognize Antichrist. He's going to have. He's going to have horns growing out of his head, or he's going to have a red cape on or something like that. People, even in the Bible, Bible students, I believe for the most part, are pretty clueless just how radically deceptive Satan and Antichrist are. Uh, when Antichrist appears on the scene, he's going to be so loved, so charismatic. People are going to be so drawn to him in a way that this world never seen anybody like that. You know, well, let me just interrupt you there. I, I have my Bible open to chapter 6 of Revelation. And uh, 
the, the lamb opens the first seal and we all know what happens. Uh, a, a white horse comes forth. There's a man sitting on a white horse. He's got a bow <clears throat> and he's got a crown and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And, and I think there's been a lot of misunderstanding about what he does to conquer. The word conquer is usually a war term, like using weapons, having armies. But I'm beginning to think, no, that's not the way he conquers. He's conquering from the inside out. And we're seeing a lot of organizations develop worldwide that are designed to do just that, conquer society from the inside out by changing relationships by changing the way humans think, react, maybe even genetically. That's conquering to me. It, it is. In fact, there's, uh, when you look at this term conquering and, and the concept of it in that context, Gary, I think there's so many different things that are working together right now to bring about this conquering of humanity without firing a conventional weapon. And I think all of these things are weapons that are being used against humanity, uh, but people yeah. don't know they are. So we, when we think of the the mind being changed, okay, we understand Elon Musk wants to uh, have Neuralink uh, uh, implanted into people. And we see more companies now, tech companies are saying, hey, we want to do that to you. We want to do that to you. All these tech companies, they want to be able to augment human beings so and to change our minds, even change how we think. Okay. So with that's technology, but what has happened in a very dramatic way, people's thinking has been altered without any technology yet. Uh, just through, uh, as we look at, um, you, you, we, we look, yeah. Well, I'm holding one up right now, and everybody's got one of these. Uh, it used to be called a telephone. It used to sit on a tabletop, and it, it rang, <clears throat> and you would walk across the room to answer it. And it had a cord attached to it. <laughs> had a cord attached to it. How far have we come? And I watch people. You know, I'm kind of a people watcher. I watch people driving. Uh, I watch people walking. I watch them at the mall. And they're all walking with one of these in front of their faces. Now, that's only one step short of being connected internationally without having to carry one of these devices. And, and that is frightening to me, I must say. Oh, it is. Uh, we recognize from Revelation chapter 13, there's going to be no escape from the system, right? So what's interesting, since you mentioned the phone, um, it's voluntary, and yet people <laughs> won't, can't separate from it. Yeah. And with that, our minds, not yours or mine, I don't mean us, but collectively, the minds of the masses have been altered already without any implementation yet of something being uh, planted into our brain or without a mark on our right hand or forehead yet. Our, the minds of the masses are already altered to a place of receiving all the different things that are coming. There's so much deception. There's brainwashing. The gaslighting has played a huge part in all of this. 